Why is our existence limited and how does that relate to rebirth? Let's find out what the most dangerous spiritual book in the world has to say about this. Birth, life, death and rebirth are all important aspects within Eastern philosophy and spirituality. There is a big focus on reincarnation and there are a group of texts known as the Nididhyasana texts which are reserved for those on the cusp of enlightenment or who have gone beyond the pale of enlightenment that attempt to tackle reincarnation and they actually provide teachings for us to make this our last life. And that's why these texts are very important. And today I'm going to read to you an important verse from one of those Nididhyasana texts, the Avaduta Gita, which is from Lord Dattatreya. And this text is an amazing text and it is often referred to as the most dangerous spiritual book in the world because it is very dangerous to your identity and your ego. And you'll see why that is today, because this verse is an amazing verse on how to make this your last life, but to realize why form is an obstacle to making this your last life. Because as we find within Eastern spirituality and philosophy, there's a big focus between form and formlessness. And so Dr. Treya is going to explain why form is an obstacle to making this your last life and overcoming reincarnation. And so I want to read to you this important verse from the Avaduta Gita. Know this, that which has form is unreal because it is limited by its form. That which is formless is eternal. He who exemplifies this truth in his own life will no longer be subject to rebirth. So what we find in this verse is that which is formless is eternal and form is temporary, is limited. And now that form obviously is the mind-body matrix, which stands in the way of true immortality or true enlightenment. And what we find within the Eastern spiritual traditions is this yearning for immortality. And there are many different ways to go about this, right? There are those traditions that focus on physical immortality as if that's real, but a lot of the deeper teachings are about true transcendence because we all know that physical immortality is not real and no one can achieve that. And those type of traditions of physical immortality arise from a misinterpretation of the great texts. And we find that also in Taoism where there's misinterpretation of the teachings of Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu, which then other people then interpret that what they were teaching is physical immortality and they weren't, but that's what a lot some people believe. And so what we find in these non-dual traditions, particularly within the Nididhyasana traditions and within the Avaduta Gita with Dattatreya, is that focus on overcoming death. But what Dattatreya is saying here, we need to focus on birth because birth and death are two sides of the same coin, right? So we're looking at death a certain way as if it's some sort of negative thing. But Dr. Trey would say, why don't we look at birth as if it's some sort of negative thing? Because both are transformations of life. Death is a transformation of consciousness back into the ultimate reality, where birth is a transformation of consciousness back into life. And so it's just a transformation, right? And so we get so attached to the transformations as the great sage Zhuangzi often talks about. And Dr. Treya here is saying the same, where he's saying that why don't we see birth birth and death as one side of the same coin and understand it's our attachment to our form that brings us back life after life. This is what actually evokes rebirth. It's our attachment to our form. It's attachment to our identity. Now, when he says form here, he means a solid form in any type of context, not just the physical body, but the form we create in our mind, that solidity of identity that we create in our mind. That's what comes back life after life. That is what the jiva is. The jiva is the ego persona system, and it is built up of three aspects. The samskaras, the subliminal imprints, 
and mental impressions, the vasanas, the habits and tendencies that are latent, and also karma, which is our actions and unconscious actions. Now, if these three haven't been cleansed out of your being, then this is what comes back life after life after life. This is the weight that brings you back through the womb. Now, when we look at the Tibetan Book of the Dead, there are those three phases, right, where there's just after death in the Bardo realm, there is point in time where there is a sense of nothingness and the weight is temporarily not there. But if your karma, your vasanas and samskaras are strong, then in the second phase, then all of that karmic stock will begin to vibrate and you'll begin to feel the vibration of this, which then will bring you into the third phase, which is rebirth. Now, obviously, if you can overcome the heaviness of those vibrations in that second phase, then you are free of your own identity. But in the second phase, that can only happen if you have cleansed a lot of that out, right? So you, when you get to that second phase in the Bardo realm, there is no vibration, there is no weight, and so it's easy to thin away into the ultimate reality of Brahman. But because we're attached to our form in our mind and also our body, that's what brings us back life after life. And so Astravaka is telling us here that we have to exemplify the truth in this life to overcome that process. And so what does Astravaka mean by truth in this life? What he means is that you transcend birth and death by abiding and realizing the transcendent reality of the undifferentiated consciousness of Atman, which is identical with Brahman. Now, this means that you have got rid of all of your karmic stock, your vasanas and your samskaras, and consciousness alone exists without anything in it. This is what Atman is. This is why Atman is identical with Brahman. So it's this realization that ends this process. It's in realizing that and abiding in that. Because when you continually abide in that, you're not engaging in the form anymore. You're not engaging in the drama of the mind. You're not overly concerned about death. Because you understand death is just a transformation of life. It's a transition, as is birth. Birth is no beginning and death is no end, especially when you understand the nature of the eternal Brahman. These are just transformations and that we interpret them as a beginning and an end from our puny intellects. But that's not the way it is. These are just transformations of life. And you'll understand that these are transformations when you abide more in the Atman. But you need to come to that realization and have that complete understanding. And you need to overcome the ignorance of Brahman. Now, the ignorance of Brahman is a vidya. And that is the ignorance of your true nature, really. It's a recognition that you are not this jiva, you are not this ego, but you are identified with the ultimate reality. You are identified with the ocean and not the wave. And so it, you need that complete understanding. In the Katha Upanishad, it actually states, He who has understanding, who has control over his mind, and is ever pure, reaches that goal from which he is not born again. I find that the Katha Upanishad beautifully sums what we're trying to say up here. So when we realize that, when we understand the Atman, when we abide as that, this will truly be our last life. But we have to realize our attachment to the form, not just the physical body, as I said, but the form of identity. We have to realize that. And in realizing that, then we begin to make a distance from it. We begin to practice vairagya, dispassion to worldliness and non-reactiveness through viveka, through discernment, discerning between the form and the formless, and we begin to abide more as the Atman. And then we realize that our true nature is identical with Brahman. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. 